Welcome to Season 2 of the To Health With That podcast, where we break up big health topics into small bites. I'm Amy, and this season I'll share all the tips, tricks, and hacks you need to get healthy with an MTHFR mutation in a step-by-step, week-by-week process. I can't wait. This week, let's kick off our series about other genetic polymorphisms by talking about COMT. So this is another heavy hitter that's deeply entwined with MTHFR. This polymorphism is also in a gene that codes for an enzyme, but this enzyme is called catechol-O-methyltransferase, or COMT. I'm hoping that right off the bat, you noticed the word methyl in there as part of the enzyme name. That is important in terms of how it ties in with MTHFR. So let's break the name down. Catechol is a shorter way of saying catecholamine, which is the group of compounds that this enzyme acts on. In fact, it metabolizes these substances as part of the breakdown process. Catecholamines are a very important group of hormones, many of which do double duty as neurotransmitters. And they have a similar structure and are all highly biologically active. They include dopamine, norepinephrine, epinephrine, and a group of estrogenic compounds called catecholestrogens. It doesn't take a vast wealth of biomedical knowledge to know that an enzyme that affects stress hormones, neurotransmitters, and estrogens is going to matter. Really matter. Catecholes are also found in food, drinks, and supplements, and the COMT gene can change the way we respond to those as well. So coffee, beer, buckwheat, green and black tea, chocolate, peppermint, parsley, thyme, many other fruits and vegetables and herbs all contain catecholes. In terms of supplements, EGCG from green tea, green coffee bean extract from coffee, (laughs) rutin, and quercetin are all very, very well-known supplements that are catecholes. A quick note on these supplements, they generally act as COMT inhibitors, which can be a good thing if your COMT is overly fast, but not so good if you have a slow COMT. As for the next part of the name, the O-methyltransferase, this refers to the specific action taken at this step in the breakdown process. We're transferring a methyl group to a particular location called O, right? And by a methyl group, I mean from a SAMI made by your MTHFR. We've heard those words before. So if your MTHFR is limping along, then COMT by nature is compromised because there isn't enough SAMI or methyl donors to go around. So these two enzymes are highly tied together. This is a big part of why MTHFR folks often have issues with estrogens. There is another breakdown pathway for these neurotransmitters, which is the MAO series of enzymes, all of which can also have polymorphisms. So there's a lot of symptom overlap between COMT and MAO mutations. It may sound like COMT isn't important because it isn't about making these things, it's about breaking them down. But in reality, breakdown is just as impactful as formation. So Overly efficient breakdown means that the substance, whatever it is, is cleared way too quickly and you don't get the benefit from it. While breakdown that's too slow means whatever that substance is hangs around for way too long and starts to do damage. There are several COMT mutations, and they have additive effects to make the overall activity of the enzyme either faster or slower than the wild-type genetics. The most studied so far is COMT-VAL158-MET. COMT-VAL158-MET is also called RS4680 or COMT-G158A because genetics can't keep its name straight. It's a really interesting polymorphism because it can take a person either faster or slower depending on its presentation. In the next two weeks, we'll deep dive into the ideas of faster and slower and what that means for the person experiencing it, and also what it looks like in terms of symptoms and personalities. With this particular mutation, the MET-MET form, uh, which is also AA, is estimated to be 40% slower than the wild type, which means those people have 
more hormones, and more neurotransmitters. The valmet, or GA, has intermediate activity, and the valval, or GG, has faster than average COMT activity. There are other COMT polymorphisms as well, and I do want to caution you from trying to figure out your fast-slow status from a genetic report. This is a thing you need to look at in real life by your symptoms, not from a piece of paper. The symptoms and signs of fast and slow COMT are very clear and easy to see, and they're far more accurate than doing theoretical math on gene SNPs. Remember that genes can actually have a polymorphism, but they can also act like they have a polymorphism because of nutrition, lifestyle, and epigenetic factors. Or they can act like they're normal because of those same factors. So the most important thing in figuring out whether you're fast or slow is symptoms and personality. Now, obviously, there's a really strong link between your MTHFR status and, more importantly, how well you're methylating, and your COMT activity. Remember that O-methyltransferase part? Well, we can only transfer methyl groups if we have methyl groups. And in order to have healthy methyl groups, methylation needs to be happening. This might sound simple, but it essentially means that healthy COMT function depends entirely on healthy methylation. So without doing your methylation background, you can work on COMT until you're blue in the face and it isn't going to fix things. This also means that if you're pushing methylation too hard, say you're taking great big doses of methylfolate or SAMe and somehow tolerating it well, but not really needing it, that has the potential to push your COMT into too fast territory. The supplements that can push COMT into too fast territory are methylcobalamin, and this is one that I see people take far too much of pretty frequently, right? Because it's it's a nice, easy supplement. It goes under your tongue. Usually they taste pretty good, and people like the little energy buzz that they get from them. Betaine or trimethylglycine, 5-LMTHF or methylfolate, and SAMe. All of these can push you into that way too much territory. You'll notice that these are all the drivers of methylation and your big methyl donors, right? COMT also needs a cofactor, and that's magnesium. Just like MTHFR needs B2 or riboflavin to do anything at all, COMT needs magnesium. Fast or slow, magnesium's a great addition to your routine, especially at bedtime, because it's physically and mentally relaxing. Thanks so much for listening, and next week we'll dive into the COMT slow personality type and picture, and also what you can do if you have, or suspect you have, COMT slow. And if you're interested in a six weeks to amazing MTHFR course and workbook, then you'd better either get into Genetic Rockstars right now, or sign up for the mailing list at tohealthwiththat.com. Okay, see you next week.